Many of you may have wondered about the old clocks that hung on the bank buildings, like this one shown on this postcard. This was on the National Bank of South Carolina in Sumner. I wondered about them also, as I took pictures of the courthouses in Texas that had tower clocks. I began researching them and found that O.B. McClintock was responsible for the majority. What I found will be shown in this video presentation. The Master Retrieval Index shows only one article had been written on these clocks. It was an article by the late Mrs. Virginia Timmons who wrote on a McClintock clock that was installed in the courtyard of an apartment complex in Houston. This clock supposedly came from a bank in New Orleans. One of the first articles that I received that contained information about McClintock was from the Minneapolis Golden Jubilee, 1867 through 1917. This article stated that McClintock had installed clocks from the four corners of the United States, from Port Townsend, Washington, to Rockland, Maine, to Fort Myer, Florida, to Corpus Christi, Texas, and to San Diego, California. This was a clock on the First State Bank in Corpus Christi. O.B. McClintock came to Minneapolis in 1901 to organize the American Bank Protection Company and to manufacture burglar alarm systems. It was called the Grade A Bank Vault Burglar Alarm System. The fundamental purpose was to ensure that in case of a burglar or a hold-up attack, it would sound the alarm to drive the burglars or bandits from the premises. This is the control cabinet. This system was so completely automatic in its function that there was but little attention needed. The timer had to be kept wound and reasonably accurate. The audible and visible indicators had to be observed when opening and closing the vault doors. Also, the battery system had to be tested once a month and reported to the company. In 1908, McClintock joined with Freeman L. Lewis to form the McClintock Loomis Company to manufacture electrical chime and clock systems. McClintock was the president and treasurer, while Loomis was the vice president. The first national bank in Jefferson, Texas is an example of the clock made by this new company. The McClintock Loomis name was on the dial. Note the ornaments in the corners of the sign opening. Have you ever thought what these ornamental designs represented? Well, it is the logo of the McClintock Loomis Company. Look closely and you will see the large M. And the lower cap C. which represents McClintock. The letter L representing Loomis is formed from one leg of the letter M. Small caps C and O representing the word company is on the sides of M. The National Library <coughs> has available in its files many patent drawings relating to horological items. This design padding drawing and others in this video presentation was obtained from the National. These patent drawings numbers 40233 and 40234, both dated August the 24th, 1909, were designs of a of clock 
first-time cases. Both were designed by James Green and assigned to the McClintock Loomis companies. Copies of patents may be obtained from the National for a dollar and a half each. Patent drawing 42758 was issued to E.M. Jones on this clock case on July the 9th, 1912. It was also assigned to the McClintock Loomis. You will probably see cases like these or variation of them. This is the master unit of the McClintock Loomis clock that was on display at the National in Buffalo, New York in 1989. The case could be walnut or dark stain. It is 3 foot 10 inches high, 17 and a half inches wide, and 10 inches deep. The front and side glasses are thick and a bevel. Total weight of the case and movements are approximately 200 pounds. The master clock is composed of three separate movements. The master movement at the top of the case, the strike train in the center, and the times motor or commentator at the bottom of the case. The master movement has two glass rings which contain mercury. This is the upper glass ring, which rocks once each minute. Each time it rocks, an electrical contact is formed inside the glass ring, which completes the circuit between the batteries and the outside clocks, and which sends the outside clocks ahead one minute. The chimes motor is automatically tripped by means of the lower glass ring. This trip occurs at each quarter hour period and the spider on the chimes motor advances to cause the ringing of the chimes and is stopped automatically until the master movement trips it again at the quarter hour period. A Seth Thomas turntable movement number 75 was modified to turn the commentator. After the full 16 chimes have been struck at the hour period, the strike train is tripped as the trailer crosses, crosses an extra segment on the commentator. The segments are in a circle on the plate of the chimes motor. There are 41 segments here. 40 for the chimes plus the extra segment. Four different chimes are played. The Cathedral Peel Westminster on the quarter hour. Reveille Peel Wellington on the half hour, the Whittington on the three quarter hour, and then on the hour, the Westminster is played. Many people thought that the Westminster was played on all quarters and that the sound was not right. This explanation should relieve those who thought McClintock had made an error in setting up the chimes. from Goodrich's The Modern Clock. The following gives the Cambridge chimes, which are used in the Westminster Great Clock. They are founded on the phrase, phrase in the opening symphony of Handel's air, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and were arranged by Dr. Crotch for the clock of Great St. Mary's Cambridge in 1793. A set of instructions were given with each installation. Also included was this cutaway drawing which showed the location of the various parts of the outside two-faced clock. The magnets are shown at the top The hammers are actuated when the trailer touches the segments. Here are the hammers behind the chimes. There are five chime tubes. 
two inches in diameter and they measure in length from four feet eight inches down to three feet two and a half inches. On November the 18th, 1919, patent 1322216 was granted to Thomas Adams and Arthur Roach, which was also assigned to McClintock Loomis. This is what is known as the Model 75 chime clock movement and was used in the master clock cases. This patent was filed in 1916 while it was McClintock Loomis but was granted after the name was changed. According to the Minneapolis City Directory, the O.B. McClintock Company, the successor to the McClintock Loomis Company, was formed in 1917. Its officers were O.B. McClintock, President and Treasurer, and Amasa McClintock of St. Louis, the Vice President. The Sweets Catalog of 1926 and 20 also listed some of the officers of the American Bank Protection Company. O.B. McClintock, President of Treasury, C.D. O'Cliff, Assistant Treasurer, and other officers were W.E. McClintock, A. McClintock, H.E. Blair, and J.B. McClintock, and M.L. McClintock. Also, listed were the products of McClintock. He had the general offices and factories in Minneapolis, and branch offices and at that time in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and New York. He still listed the grade A burglar alarm system, alt ventilator, also his clock and chime systems. In his advertising, in this Sweets catalog, he combined both the Bank Protection Company and the Clock Chime Company. This is a McClintock clock in front of the City Hall in Corn City, Texas. It was given to the city and was moved there here in uh, 1979. Originally, it was owned by the Corn City National Bank. The signs were changed and a sign for the Carnes City Chamber of Commerce was installed. The master unit is in the Chamber of Commerce office in the City Hall. It is almost original with the exception it does not have any batteries. The dial is silver plated. This is the lower part of the cabinet. This is where the fuses, the storage battery, and the battery charger were stored. This is the famous McClintock Mercury switch that is on the time movement. It rocks once each minute, and when it does, an electrical contact is made which sends an impulse to the outside clocks to move them ahead one minute. Here are the service inspection stickers that was inside the door. These were put in by Debo. More about Debo later. This is the OB McClintock logo. It is different from the McClintock Loomis that I showed you before. The lower leg of the letter M has been removed. So you can see there wasn't much trouble to change the stamping die to make the new logo. The master clock consists of the clock movement at the top and the chimes motor or commentator below it. Both mounted on a cast frame. The clock movement is a modified Seth Thomas Model 85E movement. The chimes motor is connected by two trip rods. One 
for the tripping of the chimes, and the other for tripping the hour strike. The mercury ring is missing from this movement. It is usually located here. This is the Seth Thomas logo. This is the contact for the hour strain, as is shown here. Note the wheel for the st strokes of the hour. Each slot has its corresponding hour stamped on it. The model number 85E is stamped on the lower right hand corner. The movement serial number 2268A is stamped on the left hand side at the lower corner. At the bottom of the movement is the electric strike plate and its serial number B2135. Above the strike plate is the automatic chime cutout. When the contact is on the brass portion of the cam, it allows the chimes to operate. After 10 p.m., the contact reaches the insulated part of the cam. cutting out the chimes until just before 7 a.m. when the contact reaches the brass contact again. Then the chiming cycle starts over again. The chimes motor is automatically tripped at each quarter hour period. The drum advances to cause the ringing of the chimes. The drum makes four electrical contacts at the quarter hour, eight at the half hour, 12 at the three quarter hour, and 16 on the full hour. After the 16 chime strikes, the strike train is forced downward by the action of the drum, of, of the motor drum.
the hands are spade shaped. The minute hand measures five and three quarter inches in length, measured from the center of the hole to the tip, while the hour hand is four and five eighths inches long. Uh, this is the Seth Thomas logo on the chimes motor. 